So the top two uses of water, the are uh, agriculture, 70% 70, 70 of the water uh, humanity uses is for agriculture. And the next big chunk is energy. Uh, the third biggest chunk would be in the clothing uh, industry. Uh, the fourth, hmm, depends on where you are, a lot of industrial uses use a lot of energy. For instance, mining is a big water user. Um, um, so that, that's probably the fourth. And the fifth might be uh, some other industry that I can't think of right now. But our household use would be bottom of the list, really. What I'd like uh, people to recognize is um, water is more useful and valuable than oil, and we need to act like it's more useful and valuable than oil. Uh, everybody talks about oil prices and oil prices going up and down, and nobody ever talks about water or water prices. And if we do talk about it, uh, the, the, the price is, again, so small uh, that it doesn't affect change the way we um, use our water. So what I would like to see is proper pricing for water that reflects its value. At the same time, we have to think about, well, what about poor people? You know, they need water too. How do we uh, work this out? One suggested idea is to have a minimum water allotment, say 100 gallons essentially is free. And uh, <clears throat> when you use more, you have to pay more. Many industries uh, pay less the more they use. So it's, a, it's a perverse setup where heavy water using industries, let's say steel making, uh, once they start using millions of gallons of water, they pay a very small pittance. The same thing for bottled water companies. Bottled water companies often pay maybe a dollar or two dollars or ten dollars for a million gallons of water they take out of the ground, or they just take it for free, depending on the situation. Um, so that can't continue. It's clearly unsustainable. Those are the kinds of things that we can do that will reduce our water use, help us understand how important water is to our daily lives and for our entire way of life. Um, so those are some of the things I suggest. So one of the amazing things about the Real Truth um, in Health and Environment Conference is the diversity of viewpoints, these ideas. I mean, we should never be afraid of ideas. Uh, that's one of the things I learned in my many years as a journalist, often working with indigenous people. They have some very different beliefs than we do here in the Western world. It doesn't mean they're wrong. I mean, indigenous cultures have been around for thousands of years. They believe the things they believe because they make sense to them and they work in their societies. So we can learn from them um, if we're open-minded. And I think that's what this particular conference is really strong on is the diversity of ideas. Uh, sure, you're not going to agree with a lot of them, uh, perhaps, but it doesn't mean uh, these may have some really strong, valid points about where we are in, uh, on this planet and where we're going. Um, because we're not going in the right direction, so we need to be asking difficult questions about uh, why, you know, how did we get here, where are we going, and what are we going to do about it, because we need to do things very differently than we've been doing so far, because keeping doing the same things we've been doing is just going to take us off the end of a cliff. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be a participant in this conference where people are willing to share uh, their ideas. Some of them, yeah, might come across as a bit loony, but there's tons of other really great ideas uh, that I've already learned. Um, and that's the kind of way in which we're going to get ourselves out of the mess we've put ourselves into. So thanks.